What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my statistics playlist. In previous videos, we had an introduction to statistics. We talked about populations, samples, parameters, data, variables, independent variables versus dependent variables, explanatory variables and response variables, quantitative variables and qualitative variables, numerical variables versus categorical variables, continuous variables, discrete variables, ordinal variables and nominal variables. We talked about frequency tables and methods of data visualization such as the pie chart, the bar chart, the histogram, the pictogram, the heat maps, the tree maps, the stem and leaf plot, as well as the famous box and whisker plot. We also talked about measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode, as well as measures of spread, such as variance, standard deviation, range, interquartile range, and more. Today, it's time to talk about the z-score, which is a very easy topic. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my statistics playlist. Please watch these videos in order to boost the odds of understanding. In statistics, we have measures of central tendency, such as the mean, the median, and the mode. And the mean is subdivided into arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean, among others. And we have measures of dispersion, or measures of spread, or measures of variability, or measures of scatter. And these include range, interquartile range, variance, standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, as well as the mean absolute deviation or MAD, which drives most students insane. To learn about the mean, the median, the mode, the range, the interquartile range, the variance, the standard deviation, please refer to the previous videos in this statistics playlist. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which means the variance is the square of the standard deviation. This is a symmetrical normal distribution curve, also known as a bell-shaped curve, otherwise known as the Gaussian curve, named after the German mathematician Karl Friedrich Gauss. This is the mean and the median and the mode and the 50th percentile, as long as this is a symmetrical normal distribution curve. Then we talk about the spread or the variance. You can go above the mean, you can go below the mean. This is one standard deviation above the mean. This is one standard deviation below the mean. Two standard deviations above the mean, two standard deviations below the mean. We say that sigma is positive 2 if you are two standard deviations above the mean, or sigma is negative 2 if you are two standard deviations below the mean. And if you're talking about a point whose value is here, then you are three standard deviations above the mean. And if the value is here, you are three standard deviations below the mean. And this is exactly what we mean by the z-score or the z-score. If you are one standard deviation above the mean, the z-score is positive 1. If you are two standard deviations above the mean, the z-score is positive 2. Three standard deviations above the mean, then the z-score is positive 3. How about one standard deviation below the mean? Then the z-score is going to be negative 1. Two standard deviations below the mean, z-score is negative 2. Three standard deviations below the mean, z-score is negative 3. So we can say that the z-score is the number of standard deviations. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, please drop your favorite math emoji in the comments. Please remember that if we have a normal distribution curve and it happens to be symmetrical, then the mean equals the median equals the mode. That's the case for the symmetrical curve. But how about if the curve is screwed, I mean skewed, skewed to the right when the tail points to the right, or skewed to the left when the tail points to the left. If it's positively skewed or right skewed curve like this, then the mean will be greater than the median and greater than the mode, because the values increase as you go from the left to the right. So therefore the mean is the highest in this case. Mean is greater than median, greater than mode. But with a negatively skewed curve or a left skewed curve, it's the opposite. The mode is greater than the median, which is greater than the mean. And I've told you about a cool mnemonic to help you memorize this, and it goes like this. It's me, me, mo. If your curve is symmetrical, then the mean equals the median equals the mode. How about for a positively skewed? You also write me, me, mo, which means mean, median, mode. If it's a right skewed or positively skewed, then me is greater than me is greater than mo, meaning 
the mean is greater than the median, which is greater than the mode. And if it's a negatively skewed curve, also start by writing me, me, mo. And in this case, you put less than instead of greater than. So the mean is less than the median, which is less than the mode. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to metacosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. Let's measure the wait time at two dental offices, dentist A and dentist B. The mean waiting time is the same, but the standard deviation is different. Five minutes for dentist A compared to two minutes for dentist B. In other words, dentist A has a larger standard deviation, whereas dentist B has a smaller one. When the standard deviation is larger, the deviation is larger, the spread is bigger. But when the standard deviation is smaller, the spread or the variation is smaller. So dentist A looks like this, whereas dentist B looks like that. The mean is the same. The difference is in the standard deviation, which means the difference is in the spread. So we have more variation here, less variation there. The data is more spread out here, less spread out there. But what if all the data points have the same value? For example, all of them are 7. So 7 minutes, 7 minutes, 7 minutes, 7, 7, 7, 7, etc. Therefore, there will be no deviation whatsoever because everything is 7 and the standard deviation is 0. How about the variance? Also 0. In the previous videos, we have mentioned that there is a difference between the mean for a sample and the mean for a population. Similarly, there is a difference between the standard deviation for the sample and the standard deviation for a population. Today we're talking about the z-score or the z-score, which equals the number of standard deviations. If we are two standard deviations above the mean, the z-score is positive 2. If we are three standard deviations below the mean, the z-score is negative 3. How do we calculate the z-score, which is the same as the number of standard deviations? Easy. The value of concern minus the mean for a population divided by the standard deviation for a population. Let's do this again. The z-score or the z-score, which is the number of standard deviations, equals the value in question minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation of the population. The z-score could be negative or it could be positive. Again, z-score is the number of standard deviations equals the value of concern minus the mean of a population divided by the standard deviation of a population. Let's practice what we preach. This graph represents the IQ of a population, not a small sample, but the entire population. The mean IQ in a population is 100, which is here. And since this is a normal distribution curve, roughly speaking, the mean equals the median equals the mode, and all of these are 100. And of course, you know that the median, by definition, is the same as the 50th percentile. So the 50th percentile, or the second quartile, is 100. To learn more about percentiles and quartiles, please refer to the previous videos in this playlist. All right, so this is the mean. How about the standard deviation? It's 15. So this is 100. If you go 15 above the 100, you are at 115, which is one standard deviation above the mean. How about if we go two standard deviations? 115 plus another 15 equals 130, which is two standard deviations above the mean. Why are people so mean? Next, the third standard deviation. Okay, you go 130 plus 15 equals 145. Let's go below the mean. 100 minus 15 equals 85, which is one standard deviation below the mean. How about if you want two standard deviations below the mean? 85 minus 15 is 70. How about three standard deviations? 70 minus 15 is 55. There you go. Let's apply the z-score or the z-score. For the 115, the z-score is positive 1. Why positive 1? Because I have one standard deviation above the mean. And for the 130, the z-score is positive 2. For the 145, the z-score is positive 3 because we are three standard deviations above the mean. For the 85, the z-score is negative 1. For the 70, the z-score is negative 2. For the 55, the z-score is negative 3. So, practice time. Ahmed's IQ is 115. Raj's IQ is 130. Sarah's IQ is 145. Dang, she's smart. I bet she's not afraid of fractions.
Now let's find the standard deviation and the z score. For Ahmed, the standard deviation is positive 1, and therefore the z score is the number of standard deviations, which is also positive 1. How about Raj? 130. Oh, this is two 15s above the mean, which means the standard deviation is going to be positive 2, and the z score is going to be also positive 2. For Sarah's IQ, the standard deviation is going to be plus 3, and the z-score is going to be also positive 3. How about Adam's IQ, which is 70? Oh, 70 is 2 standard deviations below the mean, so the z-score is going to be negative 2. That's the easy way. How about the more sophisticated way? Z-score is the number of standard deviations equals the value in question minus the mean of a population divided by the standard deviation of the population. Let's apply this here. How about Adam's IQ? All right, what is the X of concern? It is 70. 70 minus the mean, which is 100, divided by the standard deviation of the population, which is 15. 70 minus 100 is negative 30. Negative 30 divided by 15 is negative 2 which is the same z-score that we got before. For Ahmed, the x is 115 minus the mean, which is 100, divided by the standard deviation, which is 15. 115 minus 100 is 15. 15 over 15 is positive 1, which means his IQ is 1 standard deviation above the mean. For Raj, it's 130 minus 100 divided by the standard deviation, which is 15, which will give me 30 over 15 or positive 2. And for Sarah, the x is 145, the mean is 100, and the standard deviation for the population is 15. So therefore, the z-score is going to be 145 minus 100 divided by 15, which is 45 divided by 15 or positive 3. Let's practice more. We have the three musketeers. The IQ of the first is 111, for the second is 140, and for the third is 88. Let's find the z-score for each. Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. For the first, x is 111 minus the mean of 100 divided by 15. For the second, 140 minus the mean of 100 divided by the standard deviation of 15. And the third is 88 minus the 100 mean divided by the standard deviation of 15. And then it's just simple math. 111 minus 100 is 11. 11 divided by 15 is 0 0.73333, etc. So that's the z-score, and it's positive, of course. 140 minus 100 is 40. 40 divided by 15 is 2.6666666, etc. And this is positive. 88 minus 100 is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by 15 is negative 0 0.8. Forget these numbers for a second. If you just look at these, which musketeer is the smartest? The musketeer with the highest z-score. Quiz time. A random variable, let's call it A, has a normal distribution with a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 3. Please find the z-score for a value of 20, the z-score for a value of 12, and what value of A corresponds to a z-score of positive 1.4? Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video in this statistics playlist. Here are the equations again. Please take a moment to pause and review. You can download these notes on my website. Take a look at my other videos in this statistics playlist, as well as the biostatistics playlist. And to increase the probability of watching more videos in the future, please support the channel by going to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 700 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.